Italy is now restricting travel across the country as its number of COVID-19 cases surpass 9,172 with 463 deaths as of Tuesday morning, both numbers being the highest outside of China. All personal travel that isn't for essential work, health or family emergencies will be banned. What exactly do these me measures mean and how are the Italians fighting the virus in their Style. I'm joined from Rome, Italy, by Francesco Sisci, senior researcher at the Center for European Studies at Rome University of China, and via Skype from Shanghai, Professor Chen Hong, executive director of the Asia Pacific Studies Center of East Asia Normal University. Gentlemen, welcome to the point. So, Sisi, directly to you, exactly how severe is the situation? Because Italy only announced the lockdown of the northern part of the country a day ago and uh, immediately they expanded to the country. What are people's feeling on the first day of the nationwide lockdown? Well, uh, people are. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say scared, but very worried, very worried because uh, the escalation uh, of uh, the alarm has been very quick and uh, lots of people from the south, originally from the south, who were in the north, move rapidly to the south and this now is causing a further scare, that is uh, people could uh, affect uh, the, the southern region, the southern regions are less developed than the north, mm. the health care in the south is less effective than the north, so there is a, a lot of concern, a lot of worry. Mm -hmm. President uh, Giuseppe Conte calls the um, I stay home decree ban. He said all public gatherings and sports events are banned or suspended. Schools are closed until April the 3rd. Public places like gyms, theaters and pubs are closed. So Sishi, um, you know the kind of draconian measures that have been put in place in Wuhan, Hubei. So what are the differences between these two different kind of lockdowns, if any, and how, effective, how effectively do you think these uh, lockdowns in Italy can be enforced? Well, this uh, for, for Italy is the first ever experience. Italians, uh, as people know, are not very good at obeying rules, following rules and uh, rules now are quite draconian but uh, there is not a lot of enforcement of course uh, of these uh, draconian rules and uh, also you know we are the whole country has no experience with uh, anything like that mm. chinese uh, conversely are very good at following orders they trust their government italians don't trust their government so the situation is really confused and confusing in Italy. We, ha we have to follow the situation, the evolution of the situation in the next few days. But I'm um, afraid that, that uh, um, things will still be quite fuzzy for, for a few days at least, if not for weeks. Hmm. Let me go to Professor Chen Hong in Shanghai, observing from China, because we pay a lot of attention to what is happening, uh, not just for cur out of curiosity, but also because uh, while China's situation has been largely contained, the new cases that are being found in China actually come from people who travel into China. So whatever is happening in, in other parts of the world is of great interest to the Chinese people as well. So Professor Chen, how do you look at the measures that's being taken by the Italian government to lock down the entire country, the differences between these measures as the ones that we have seen in Wuhan and Hubei province? Well, I think I say the uh, situation in, uh, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the measures taken in uh, uh, Italy is something even more draconian than uh, in China because this is the world's first country to, pay, to, 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 uh, to place its uh, uh, you know, entire territory under the extraordinary restriction on people's daily life, which is really unprecedented in Italy after the Second World War. Things, while well, things actually are happening, you know, on a you know quite stable situation in which actually you know confirmed cases are decline, and also the uh, situation are, uh, are gradually you know under control. But things actually you know out of the border, outside China is actually getting you know sort of like uh, uh, worsening. 
So uh, Italy obviously is one of the uh, uh, scenarios that is actually causing a lot of alarm. So I think actually the uh, government in uh, uh, Italy is doing something that is quite uh, sensible and important that actually is to bring the whole situation under uh, their control by imposing this uh, uh, travel ban and also, you know, encouraging, uh, you know, social distancing, uh, you know, and also, you know, uh, stopping people from gathering. Those are actually all, you know, proven, mm. uh, you know, uh, measures that are actually effective yeah. that worked you know, in China. Well, multiple studies have uh, shown a alarming similarity between what happened in Wuhan in the early days and what has happened in Italy. For mm. instance, a professor of economics at the uh, Sapienza University of Rome says the situation in Italy in the first week of March is very similar to that of Hubei in the last week of January. Uh, Wuhan's population is very similar to Lombardy, and Hubei's population, the province, is also very similar to Italy. So scholars advise people to follow the government's instructions instructions or else the cost will be very high because in Hubei uh, almost 3,000 people lost their lives. So Sishi, without sounding too alarmist, do you think um, people see the possible consequences if things are not taken much more seriously? Uh, do you think the general public are understanding what they could possibly be looking at? Well. You know, the problem is that uh, there is a lot of uh, lack of public trust in Italy. That is, uh, people are used to take care of themselves, looking after themselves. And there is um, not a great trust and great confidence in the government. That is, uh, if the government tells them to do something, they will try to uh, find their own ways. Whereas in China, traditionally, is not uh, people trust the government and follow the government orders. This is not the case in Italy. And uh, Italy has exper is experiencing this uh, kind of crisis for the first time ever in its history. Mm. So these all piles up into a situation that unfortunately I think uh, will become even more confusing, could become at least even more confusing in the next uh, few days, mm. um, the, uh, the government has to try to gain a further trust of, from the common people. Uh, it won't be easy. Yeah. Well, is that why that President Conte said uh, this is on Twitter that this is the moment of self-responsibility? He tweeted, and it roughly translates that Italy's future is in our hands. We all do our part, giving up something for the good of the community. At stake is the health of our beloved ones, our parents, our children, our grandparents. I just signed the decree, um, something like I stay at home in Italy, and this tweet quickly gained more than 8,000 likes. So do you think slowly people will be more understanding because this is not a flu? This can kill much more than flu. Um, I think the people understand that. Um, people are uh, uh, quite alarmed about that. I'm not so sure at the moment that the people, common people, have enough confidence in what are the measures applied by the government so far. That we have seen a lot of bickering between central government and local government, the press release and uh, uh, controversies. In a way, uh, Italy and the government of Italy has to find a common voice to speak as one and I hope it does, and this would inject a lot of confidence mm. yeah. into into the common people. Yeah. Let me read. Let me read this tweet also by Nicola Zingaretti, who is leader of Italy's Democratic Party, one of the national ruling parties. is also president of the Lazio region. Uh, he basically said, "Doctors told me I'm positive for COVID-19. I'm fine, but I will have to stay at home for the next few days. From here, I'll continue to follow the work there is to do." Courage to all, and see you soon. So it sounds that. He's taking it uh, quite positively in a quite optimistic manner. Is there anything about the Italian personality or character that will help to a certain degree at least that people can get over this 
period of time, that they're quite relaxed, but they're also taking this in, in, a, in a graceful manner, maybe, Sishi? Yeah, well, optimism. People are uh, quite optimistic. Uh, Zingaretti is a wonderful man. He was kind of trying to inject optimism in, mm -hmm. the, in the people. But you see, sometimes too much optimism in the face of a tragedy, of something that really uh, ought to be taken very seriously, is not working well. And unfortunately for Zingaretti, who tried his best, it didn't work very well, he got infected. So we have to walk, as Italians, a fine line between being positive about the future, but also taking the right measures to prevent uh, further spread of the disease. And we haven't now so far found the balance yet, and I, I'm afraid that it will take some time. I hope we will find the balance before the disease spreads too fast mm. and but spreads too far, yeah. uh, but we have to follow. Yeah. Professor Cheng, finally, this yes, very, sorry. yeah, Professor Cheng, this, this question I think is very important. Despite the cultural differences, mm -hmm. despite the peop people's trust, people's relationship with their government, what do you think has been the biggest lesson that has been learned through Hubei and Wuhan that can be useful for other people who are fighting this virus now? Well, I think the first important thing is actually the uh, uh, transparency and also effective control, you know, from the uh, uh, relevant authorities to the uh, people. There should be a kind of like a, uh, you, know, you know, smooth, you know, channel of uh, uh, transmission of information that is very important. And second, that is actually the way that actually people can really, you know, dispel their panic so that panic sometimes can really be brewing some kind of, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know uh, desperacy. So this is actually uh, something I think actually in uh, uh, Italy, of course, as we know that the Italians are very ebullient, they're outgoing, sociable, you know, and free spirits, you know, but on the other hand, actually still some kind of, uh, you know, panic can be brewing and that can lead to some kind of uh, negative impact, you know, on their mentality. And also, you know, such a kind of like travel ban imposing Italy, you know, you know by and by people will get fatigued you know, with such measures. In a few weeks, they may refuse to succumb to the, uh, you know, authorities of the measures. So I think actually, definitely there should be uh, some kind of, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know well-guided, you know, information being you know, t t told to mm. the public. Yeah. Well, information alone is not going to cure people a very precise, mm. a very, you know, resolute action and the ability to execute yes. your plan, to enforce your policy. But let me go to Sishi for my final question. A lot of uh, articles are being written about how things are handled in the United States, in China. I mean, a lot of articles are being, being written up and circulated about the things in Italy, for instance. I wonder, how, Sishi, how much have you read uh, among these articles? Do you think the Chinese people are getting the situation right? Do you think they're understanding the situation in an objective manner? I think uh, uh, China has come to grips with the, with the reality of the dis dis uh, disease and the result also proves that it's right. The problem, I think, from what I see, is that uh, many people and many countries out of China are still uh, uncertain about this, uh, the, the seriousness of this disease. This is the problem. In a way, I feel that Hong Kong, Taiwan, some Asian countries understand better the Chinese experience. Mm -hmm. Other countries don't. And uh, European countries, uh, at least, uh, perhaps are now paying attention to what is happening in Italy. The United States is paying attention to what is happening in Italy. And perhaps they can draw better lessons. I don't know. I'm not so sure. We hope because so. Because every country is different. This is Absolutely. the problem. Absolutely. Cultures different, systems different. Um, yeah, the national character also very, very different. So we hope things can be under control very soon. Many thanks for Francesco Sishi taking time to join us from Rome. And earlier I was talking to Professor Cheng Hong uh, in Shanghai. Many thanks to him as well.